Hello my friends, and welcome back. In today's video, I thought we would have a try at rewriting a parser written in Chomsky by hand. So this project you may know, WHKD, is the hotkey daemon, which I recommend that people use with the tiling window manager Komorebi. The parser for this configuration format is actually written in Chomsky. So if you go over to the source, to the parser file, you see we import Chomsky and we have this very declarative style of putting together the parser. In Chomsky, if you haven't seen it before, I highly recommend checking it out. It is a Rust crate which describes itself as a parser library for humans with powerful error recovery. And you can get up and running with this incredibly quickly. Um, there are a lot of tutorials, a lot of examples. Here in the examples uh, folder in the repository, you see they have examples for JSON, for a mini version of Rust, for a Pythonic language. It's really, really cool. However, it is also really, really cool to be able to write um, the lexing part, at least I think we'll try and cover in this video, um, the lexa, the scanner by hand. I think it's a really, really useful skill to have in your computer science slash development tool set. So let's scope what we're going to do. Let's take a look at this example. I think we can implement keywords. There's only one keyword right now. Uh, keywords are prefixed with a dot, so dot shell, uh, and then the name of the shell that you want to use. So either uh, command, a modern version of PowerShell, or the legacy version of PowerShell. Uh, you can also have this nesting that specifies different behavior depending on the currently focused app. I don't think we'll include this today. Uh, I think it makes more sense to focus on well, handling comments and also the uh, the basic hotkey command figure configuration format. So you have the hotkeys on the left, you have the delimiter, which is the colon, and then you have the command that gets run inside of the shell. So why don't we start by uh, let's say listing out the different token types that we're going to have. So we'll have enum token type. Uh, we should derive some stuff on here. Uh, debug, copy, clone, EQ, and partial EQ, I think is good to get us going. So we're going to have a keyword or shell. Uh, we're going to have uh, the shell itself. What else are we going to have? We're going to have uh, a mod key. Uh, mod key. We're going to have, um, I think these are called V keys in the Win32 API. So we'll call this a V key. Uh, then we're gonna have a colon. Uh, oh, also we need the, the plus token in there as well. Get the plus token, the V key, the colon. Then we have the command. Command that gets run when the hotkey is triggered. Uh, and then an end of file token. Uh, I think it'll be useful to implement uh, an enum also for keyword. We only have one keyword, right, which is shell, but I still think it's, it's worth doing this as there could be multiple keywords in the future. And then the next keyword, um, sorry, the next enum that we should implement is probably for shell. So we have command, we have modern PowerShell, and we have 
Legacy PowerShell. Uh, for both of these, we should probably implement from string for keyword. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Bad Rust Rover. Implement members, that's what I want. So uh, we'll match S. And if S is shell, we'll return self shell. Otherwise, we'll return uh, an error. Uh, this should be OK, self shell. Cool. And we'll do a similar thing here for the different types of shells that are valid. So we have CMD, which is going to be OK command. We have push, modern PowerShell. And then we have legacy PowerShell. Legacy PowerShell is the one that comes installed with the operating system. Um, I named them like the like this uh, because this one is PowerShell.exe, this one is push.exe, and this one is cmd.exe. So cool, we have the keyword, we have the shell. Um, let me see. I think that we can actually pull in a crate here, uh, the same crate that I use in WHKD. Windows hotkeys. So we'll pull in Windows hotkey 0.2.1 and reload that. Um, and we can use that to do the same sort of thing for mod key and plus, except that we don't have to, sorry, mod key and V key, which we don't have to implement ourselves. So we have our token types. Uh, now we need to be able to represent a token in a struct. So let's again derive, let's say, debug, clone, EQ, and partial EQ. Uh, I think we'll use a string type. I'm not going to bother optimizing um, to use uh, reference stirs in this, in this video. I think that in and of itself because it involves lifetimes, uh, uh, deserves a, a dedicated video. Uh, we'll have one Lexeme, and this is going to be an option because EOF does not have uh, a Lexeme. So we'll let this be a string, and we'll keep track of the line number with U size. Cool. So now that we can represent a token, uh, we need a scanner to be able to scan all of the things. So our scanner needs the source code, which we will feed it as a vec of chars. Uh, it needs to keep track of all of the tokens, which can be a vec of token. It needs to keep track of the current line, which can be a U size needs to keep track of the current index within the, the source vec, and it needs to keep track of, oops, of wherever we're starting from. So why don't we change this around a little bit to start, current, and line. Cool, I think we have most of the types that we need now. So we can start implementing some methods on scanner to chomp through uh, all of the all of the chars that we're going to get. So we're going to want to call at the very top level. We're going to want to call something like scan tokens, uh, which will need a mutable reference to self. Um, and we'll do something like while self is not oh while self is not at end. Um, We'll set self.start to whatever self.current is. Uh, and we will scan a new token. And then once we have hit the end, we will push um, to the tokens vec 
an end of file token, which will look like this. Let's bring this up a little bit. Uh, it is going to be an EOF token. It's not going to have a lexeme, and it's going to be whatever self.line is right now. So let's implement uh, this is at end function. So self is at end. Uh, we'll note that we're at the end if current is uh, greater than or equal to uh, the source. So we're going to be looking up indexes in this vec of chars. So when the current char is greater than or equal to the the length of the, the source vec, that's when we know that we have hit the end. Now we can go about scanning some tokens. And if you recall in crafting interpreters, the way that we often start this off is by grabbing a char. So we're going to get uh, a char from, I think most uh, teaching materials call it advance. So what is advanced supposed to do advance returns a char right and what it does is it will consume the current char in the source um and it will do that by incrementing current. So this actually has to be mutable in order for us to be able to increment. Uh, and then we return that consumed char. So we have a char in our scan token method now. Uh, scan token also needs to be mutable because we're calling advance from there. So we can start matching on some low hanging fruit. So, oh, sorry, not that. Uh, so let's say if we get a dot, we're not going to do anything. Of course, we have to match on C for those errors to go away. So if we get a dot, we're not going to do anything. A dot does tell us that the next um, the next identifier of sorts will be a keyword. Uh, however, we, we don't need to deal with that immediately when we get a dot. So why don't we start, um, or why don't we continue rather with symbols? So semicolon will be a semicolon. Actually, you know what, why don't we add dot into here? Why don't we just add dot anyway? It'll be nice to print out. It'll be nice to print out. So we'll do self dot tokens dot push. We're going to push a token. And that token will be dot. And we'll do some dot. Oh, or actually we can do some C to string. Ah, yeah, how about that? Fancy. Uh, so we'll do self dot line. Nice. And then we're going to do the same thing for most of the symbols. This one is going to be the colon. Um, we also need a plus in there. Uh, the plus char. And then what else? Uh, it's an invisible character, but it's still a character, the new line character. So when we get a new line, we're not going to add a token for it. We're just going to increment uh, the line like that. And just looking over here, it seems like the other symbol that we need to care about is uh, the hash bang, the, the pound, however you want to call it. I usually call it hash. So we're not storing, we're not doing anything with the comments, right? So let's say we want to keep scanning 
until we reach a new line. And we want to ignore all of that stuff because we're not doing anything with uh, the comments. So we'll do while self dot peak, which we need to implement is not new line and self uh, is not at end. We just advance. Uh, and that should be enough to ignore uh, all of the comments. So why don't we implement this peak method while we're at it? So peak is also going to return a char, right? With peak, we always want to make sure that we're not peaking past the end, right? So we'll do if self is at end, we'll return uh, this terminating character. Otherwise, we can peek at the current chart. So where did we go? So if we are not at a new line, so if this is not a new line and we're not at the end, then we can advance and eat through all of these comments and ignore them. Now we get to what I think are the fun bits, right? Um, let me take this out of the way, actually. Uh, so what are we going to do with the white space? So the white space, we are also going to do nothing with, basically, right? So we'll declare this variable in the match. So we have that big match statement and we're saying, okay, we're going to name this child, whatever it is, white space. And if white space is white space, uh, then we can just do nothing. We can just carry on. We don't necessarily need to care about that. Uh, and the way this is going to work is it's, it's going to advance, but the advance is going to take place here. Um, and the, the scan tokens. And actually it's not even an advance, it's just that we are incrementing uh, the value of start. So when you start again, um, let's say if this was the white space that was consumed and skipped, the next current is gonna be this T here. So that's pretty cool. White space, if white space is white space. Uh, and then I think that's all of the funny stuff out of the way. Next, we get to focus on alpha numeric. Uh, why don't we just call it alpha for short? So if we're going to do the same sort of thing here, if alpha is alpha numeric, uh, we can do some stuff, right? So at this point, if we have an alphanumerical char, the chances are that it is, actually we want to pass a string out of it. An S here on its own doesn't mean anything to us. A P here on its own doesn't mean anything to us. You know, it just, it, it doesn't work like that. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is uh, distinguish between the different kinds of uh, strings that we can have. So if we go back here to our token types, uh, we have the keyword, uh, which is going to be uh, in our uh, in our case right now, the only keyword that we have is shell. So that's a special word that we want to capture as a keyword. Uh, we have types of shell, which are also predefined as one of these three. Uh, we have mod keys, so alt, control, things like that. And we have V keys. So these are the ones that we're going to distinguish between in the last part of our match expression, uh, depending on what this alpha expands into. So we want to take 
uh, as many chars as we need to until we reach either a new line or a space. So let's do uh, taken until equals self dot take until, and that's going to be either or. And let's say this is going to be a string. It's going to return a string. Uh, and then we can match on taken until uh, cast it to a string just to make it a little easier here. Um, and we're going to do something similar, right? So here, alpha, if is alphanumeric. Here we're going to do, why don't we start with keywords, right? We're going to do keyword if uh, keyword from string. Uh, I'm pretty sure I implemented that. Why is that? Keyword is defined multiple times. Did I? Oh, no, I didn't want it like that. There we go. That's the one we implemented. So if we can pause a keyword out of this, then let's push that keyword into our vec of tokens. So we're going to have a new token. I think I did the same. No, I didn't. Did I? No. So the token type here is going to be keyword. The lexeme is going to be uh, taken until. And the line is going to be self.line. Then the next thing we can match against is the type of shell. We're going to do, again, something very, very similar. We're going to do shell if shell from string. And if, indeed, we can pause a shell that we recognize, we're going to push a token of type shell. Then as we go further down, the next thing is going to be a mod key. So we'll do mod key if uh, we should be able to import mod key here from, ah, okay, here we have from key name, uh, which is the method that is implemented in the library. So alt control shift windows super okay so if we can pause a mod key out of this um you know what i think i yeah okay this returns an error so we want if this is okay and if this is okay and if this is okay so if it is okay, then we know that we have a token that is a mod key. And then we can use taken until um, as the lexeme and ensure that that gets pushed into our list of tokens. So after the mod key, uh, we'll try and find a V key uh, from Windows hotkeys, which also implements this from key name. Very useful for us. Uh, so that will be like that. So if this string that we get from taken until, if we can pause a V key out of it, then we'll push a V key token. And it looks like the only thing that we have left after that is the command. So we don't need to do any checks. Uh, we'll do self.tokens.push. 
and we will push a token of type command and we'll have some taken until referencing self dot line um so actually we can underscore this because we're not using that value we're just making it clear to ourselves in the future that this uh base case uh should be the command so we have to implement this function take until this method so i think this will be requiring a mutable reference to self so how we want to pause this really depends on what the last token was so that last token uh we'll call this self dot last token we'll come back to that uh, and implement that but this is going to be a token type we already know that so let's use the the matches macro here so if the last token um i guess this is going to return an option because if you're at the first like if you're right at the start of the file you're not going to have a last token so okay if we have a token type of colon as the last token or we have a token type of keyword then we want to take until the end of the line so take until new line right and if that is not the case we just want to take until space yeah oh and these will both need to return strings so the way that i'm thinking about this is if we know that the last token was here the only place that we have to go is the end of the line and similarly if we know that the last token was a keyword shell the only place that we have to go is to the end of the line so um I think there is a syntax error here. Can't quite figure out what. Oh, it, it doesn't have a, a fat arrow. My bad, my bad. So to get this to work now, we need to figure out how we are going to take uh, a reference to the last token. Uh, so we're going to take this from self dot tokens last uh, so if we can do if let sum token equals uh, self dot tokens dot last we can return the token type else we'll return none so that's how we get our this needs to be wrapped in some. That's how we get uh, our last token, our possible last token, if we're not right at the beginning of the file that we're pausing. Uh, okay, that looks that looks pretty good. Now we have these two that we need to implement. Uh, why don't we start with take until space? I think that one should be a little bit simpler so as always actually I'm not sure uh, I don't know we do need a mutable for this so we'll do some checks first so while we are not at the end of whatever we're pausing and while um, 
while the next thing when we peek ahead is not uh, space, we want to keep advancing, right? Until we reach a space, unless we're at the end. Uh, at this point, once we have broken out, once we have reached this uh, space char, we can uh, we can get a value out of this, right? We can do uh, self dot source, and we can like we can take a slice selection of chars out of this. We can go from self start to self current which gives us a vec of chars um, and we need to stringify that so we can't do much with a vec of chars so we'll do value dot um, collect maybe um, I wonder if that can be collected into a string. I'm not seeing an error here, so I'm going to assume that that is okay. So once we have collected that, we also want to advance uh, past the uh, the space character, and then we can. Um, we can just return stringified, hopefully, take until space. All right, cool. I think that we'll see. We'll see. The proof will be when we write some tests and run it. But for now, I think that looks OK. Uh, so next, we are going to implement take until new line. So we'll do something similar to this code that we wrote in the last function. Um, so we want to make sure that self is peak is not new line. So spaces are OK and commands. Um, however, you can have comments on the same line and those we want to ignore. So let's say um, also while self dot peak is not this character, because that is the end of a meaningful line for us. Uh, so if self dot peak, like if we got out of this because self dot peak is uh, the hash character, we we still, we don't want the parsing to continue from that character. Like we want to keep on going to the new line and we want to keep ignoring everything until the new line. So while self is not at end and self.peak is not new line, we'll just continue to advance and then we can craft a value again a little bit like this but oh hang on if we keep advancing advancing is incrementing current so At this point, we want to get a copy of whatever current is before it gets incremented. Otherwise, we're going to be including everything past um, this comment character. Right? Right. Um, and then finally, we want to advance. Once we have advanced, we can return stringified. Uh, this does not cover all cases. So I'm not going to do any crazy, cool pattern matching uh, error reporting. Sorry here. I'm just going to panic 
unknown token. Uh, that in and of itself is a, a, a whole video good error reporting. So let's take a look at this. Um, a good way to check is just to make sure everything has been used. Dot has been used, keyword, shell, uh, mod key, plus, uh, v key, colon has been used, command has been used, and, and a file has been used. So I think we are ready to write a test to validate our assumptions. Uh, so let's we'll, we'll make a little test here. Uh, what do we need to pull in? We're going to need the scanner. Uh, we're probably going to need the token and the token type. Um, and of course, we're going to need uh, something to pause. So let's say the source is going to be uh, what is the source going to be? Uh, we'll get uh, get this. Um, ignore EOL. Ignore inline comments. Uh, And then on the first line, we can uh, we can have this, right? Ow, what the frick happened there? There we go. Uh, and then, yeah, we expect this to also be ignored. So given this input, when we pause this, uh, I guess we can check against the vec of tokens. So let's say token. It's going to be a little bit tedious, but it's okay. So at line one, uh, what, first we're going to have a dot. Then the next token we expect to be a shell. Um, and this should be some shell to string. Then, oh, sorry, this should be keyword shell. Should be keyword shell. This should be the shell, which is going to be PowerShell. And then we expect all of this to be ignored. Uh, the next token will be on line three because we're going to be skipping this line or we expect it to skip this line uh, and we're going to have alt oh wait no shell then we have a new line then we have mod key uh, which is going to be alt why why are you being silly why are you not letting me construct a vec huh now it works all right so the next one is going to be a mod key it's going to be a line three and it's going to have alt then we're going to have plus then we're going to have H. Then we're going to have a colon. Token type V key. Ah, it's because these are missing. Yeah. So token type will have V key. Then we'll have a colon. And that is token type colon. Then 
will have a command. And you know, we don't need to do another one. This is already long enough. Uh, so I'll plus H and then the command is going to be Pomore BC focus left. All right, why don't we try giving this a little run and see what the, oh wait, no. So we, we need to run the scanner. Of course we need to run the scanner. So let scanner, oh, let scanner equals a uh, scanner. We'll make a, a new scanner. So the source is going to be source as, um, how do you, wait, let me think about this. Uh, I, I don't think there's a two, I think there's a, a chars that you can collect into a VEC. Yeah. Uh, tokens is going to be a brand new VEC. Uh, we're going to start at zero, current is zero, and line is going to be one. So we'll make our scanner mutable, and then we'll run scanner.scan tokens. And then we can do our test. So we expect scanner.tokens to equal our tokens vec that we just made up here. All right, gonna cross my fingers and see if this works, the moment of truth. Ah, syntax error. Well, okay, the real, the real moment of truth. Oh my God, okay. Should have done these checks. Uh, so consider borrowing here which probably means I need to consider borrowing here as well. Third time lucky? Oh my god, it's embarrassing. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't uh, keep bacon up on the side. Uh, oh, we don't want that in there. Um, unused crate token. Unused variable current. Oh, right. We wanted to use that current here. All right, here we go. So, wait, are you going to show me the diff in a human readable way? Uh, expected none. Oh, I think that's an issue with my test. Um, my test data. So actually we expect dot to have some dot to string. Let's try that again. Uh, so the dot is okay. Keyword is okay. But somehow we ended up with command PowerShell. All right, continuing on, we have mod key, we have plus, we have V key, we have the colon, we have the command. Ah, and we're also missing the EOF. So let's add in the EOF real quick. Um, and then I think we have a logic error that we need to look at. Let's run this. Uh, where are we? Huh. I think maybe we forgot to increment a line somewhere as well. So, right. So if we are taking until new line,
we're doing take until new line, then when we get to a command, we need to increment the line. And I think, I think, um, if we increment the shell, I'm uh, sorry, I mean, if we take a shell here, if we pause a shell, we also need to increment uh, the line because that is the end of the line. All right, getting closer. So left, right, here we are. Some shell, and so this is giving us command. Why is this giving us command? Um, it's giving us command because it's pausing an extra something here, uh, an extra space. So why don't we trim? So this is one of the nice things that you get very cool functions for in, in Chomsky. Uh, you have this padded, right? And it's just gonna, uh, it's, it's going to take into account all of these uh, these spaces before or after. So this one we're going to do ourselves. So we have take until space. So we're going to trim this. And then I guess we have to do to string again. And I think we should probably do the same thing here. So it's our own, our own padded. Okay. Okay, so it's looking good. So we have dot keyword shell mod key plus v key uh, colon command. Oh, I, I, I did a bad copy paste. That's my mistake. EOF is a, a none. So I think, fingers crossed, that should, no. Oh, I'm celebrating too early. Celebrating too early. Okay, so. Um, EOF should be online for that is correct because our input has this new line here. All right. And there we have it. The tests are green. We can pause. Uh, we can pause uh, a stripped down version of the WHKD configuration file. This was surprisingly a lot of fun. Uh, so let's have a, a look. So this is let's say 235 lines of code uh, with the test. It's, you know, let's say, you know, 200 and 250 on average lines of code versus, and this is just the Lexa, right? Uh, versus how big is the parser file? Oh, so that's also with tests. Um, versus about a hundred lines, about a hundred lines of code for the Chomsky version. So, you know, you can see why people, including myself, reach for Chomsky when they want to get something done quickly with a high level of confidence. Um, it's, yeah, it makes some things really, really simple conceptually, like just being able to do padded or padded by versus oh no i forgot to you know i forgot to trim the string you know it it really is uh one of many quality of life features in this excellent crate which i recommend that you all check out if you haven't done so already
I think that's a good place to wrap it all up. If you learned something from this video, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment, and of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You're probably watching this video there, so why don't you go ahead and hit like. We recently made it to 540 subscribers, 1000 subscribers when? I don't know. Hopefully soon. Hopefully very, very soon. I hope that whatever you all do today, you have a great, great day. And I hope to see you all back here next time. Goodbye for now.